If you've been in a biochemistry lab, you might be all too familiar with this thing. Yep, we're talking Western blotting. So Western blotting is this technique that we can use to look for specific proteins um, after we do an SDS page gel. Today is like a more casual, um, like what does it actually look like? Um, how do we set things up type of thing? Um, introduction to Western blotting. I previously did a longer um, video on the, I mean, like a video with more of the background and more graphics um, for people. Um, and so it might be a better place to start if you're not familiar with Western blotting. Um, and so I will link to that in the comments as well as to text versions um, so that you have all the opportunities to learn more about this technique that I hate. So an SDS page gel is basically where we take a little bit of a um, sample containing some proteins and we run it through this gel mesh and it's going to separate by size. So basically we take the proteins and we um, denature them. So we unfold them, we um, heat them up and co coat them in SDS, which is this detergent. So it's kind of like an artificial soap and it's going to unfold the, keep the protein like unfolded. Well, it's, so the heat and the, um, this SDS are going to unfold the protein and the SDS has this negative charge so it's going to coat the protein with this negative charge and then you use electricity so we hook this up to this power box and it uses electricity um, to kind of, to put it like a positive charge at the bottom that convinces the proteins to like swim through the jelly mesh and then the longer ones are going to get tangled up more so they're going to travel slower and then when you stop the gel um, running it's going to they're going to be at the top um, and so the problem is that you can't really see the proteins because they're like invisible to us. But what we can do is we can do like a stain. So we can do like an all protein stain. So you get something that looks kind of like this. So you can see that this gel is this like really thin thing that's kind of like really hard to work with. Um, and which is why we're gonna transfer it to the proteins to a membrane in a minute, or one of the reasons. But um, right now you just see a bunch of different bands or you see like a smear and you can't tell what band is what and so we have like a ladder so there's like a size ladder on the side you might be able to see um that's like known proteins of like standards of known sizes um that you load along with your samples and that allows you to get like a relative estimate of the various sizes of the proteins but it's not telling you what the proteins are and so what if you want to know what the proteins are well, if you have no idea, you're out of luck. So you have to use like a machine, a technique like mass spectrometry, um, where they like take the band and they figure out what amino acids, so what protein letters are there, and then they compare that to like databases with all the different proteins and stuff. And so, yeah, um, so that can tell you what the bands actually are. Um, but say you have a really good idea, like maybe you're trying to purify a protein um, and you wanna see if you're actually, like it's actually getting expressed. So are the cells actually making it? Um, so that's a common way that we use it in our lab because we do a lot of um, protein purification um, and like structural biology and stuff where we're trying to get specific proteins made. But a lot of times you see Western blotting used in more like cellular biology um, where you take samples of cells in different states. So maybe um, at different time points or under different conditions like maybe stressed or unstressed or cells from different parts of the body, that sort of thing. And you want to test how much of a specific protein is in those um, different samples. Um, and so that that's a time where you know a specific protein. Um, so you might have this really like giant mix of a ton of different proteins and you wanna know if a specific protein is there and how much is there. Um, and so what you'll do is you'll take a little sample from that cell, so like a lysate. Um, so basically that's where you break the cells open and then you um, like remove the membrane stuff so like all the like unsoluble stuff and then you take the soluble part containing the proteins and then you put it you um run it through this gel and so you just run a, like a little bit so you're only having a tiny little part of the protein that you're actually wanting to look for um and like a ton of other proteins because there's a bunch of proteins in the cell um so we need a sensitive way to be able to protect that protein which is where like the antibodies and the secondary antibodies are going to come in so you might be familiar with antibodies more in terms of like disease fighting and that sort of thing but antibodies are basically just these little like these little proteins um they're that have this like 
comment constant part um, and then this variable part part and the variable part has different um, can have like you can have different variable parts that bind to different um, proteins or different um, also, antibodies don't have to be just to like proteins but to different things um, so different antibodies will bind to different things um, and they have that constant part and the variable part and so the variable parts the part that changes and then the constant parts but it's constant but it's only constant for like that animal so if you have an antibody that was made like in a mouse for a specific protein like anti like mouse anti GFP then if you can use a secondary antibody so like an antibody in a goat that recognizes the mouse antibody so you can do like a mouse anti goat antibody um, and then so you can do a secondary antibody and this means that if we have the primary antibody bind the thing you want then you can have a secondary antibody bind that and then the secondary antibody if it's like labeled um, then it can like amplify your signal so that's how you can figure get like a lot of signal from a tiny amount of protein um, and also the secondary antibody is helpful because um, it allows you to use like the, you can use the same secondary antibody for like any primary antibody that was made in the animal that the secondary antibody was made against um, and so speaking of so that we're going to use those antibodies um, to look for the various proteins in the sample but we need to first transfer the um, the proteins out of the gel and onto a membrane so typically it's like a nitrocellulose or a PVDF membrane so this is a nitrocellulose it's um, the same as like stuff type of stuff that we used for the slot bot yesterday um, so it's just a like sheet of this stuff that'll bind to proteins um, and so we want to get our proteins out of that gel and onto this membrane and so in order to do this we're gonna use this um, so this is like there's different ways to do this but this is a semi dry or semi wet I don't know which way they say it um, transfer system and so it's actually it fits into like the same box as we used to run the gel um, but it's different um, and it's actually going to take things horizontally so with the SDS page we want like vertical we want down and now we're going to take it out of the gel and onto the membrane so in order to do this we need to set up this like transfer sandwich um, so it has these like sponges and that are going to help with the wicking and, or the sponges that are going to help like keep things nice and snug and then so things aren't shifting around um, and then you have these filter papers that are going to help wick the liquid through um, and the proteins through because the proteins are dissolved in the liquid um, and then onto the membrane um, and so you run the electricity and it's going to take the proteins out of the gel and onto the membrane um, and then you can do the probing stuff but first so so the sandwich thing it'll vary by different like brands and companies or whatever but this one is like this and so basically you said you have like a sponge it's help keep things snug and like a filter paper it's gonna help um, with lick with everything through um, and then you're gonna put your gel um, and then you're gonna put the membrane and so remember the membrane has to go on top of the gel in like the towards the direction that the electricity is flowing so you want to make sure like double check that you have it in the right direction or the electricity is going to flow the proteins out of the gel and onto the filter paper which isn't helpful and then you use like another um filter paper another sponge and then this whole thing this whole cassette and closes up um well it's not, not so sloppily it closes up things are really hard to do one-handed but it closes up and then it goes into this cassette and so you want to make sure again that you're doing it in the right direction and it would work better if I wasn't doing this one handed with sloppy um, but basically it goes like this and it goes into this, this thing and so you might have been wondering why I was doing it in this like casserole dish thing um, and that's because when we do it I'll keep it like filled with the transfer buffer um, and I want you want to keep everything really wet when you're doing it so you don't get air bubbles because the proteins and the liquid and every nothing can flow through that if you have an air bubble and so then you're gonna like the protein won't transfer in that spot and that'll be a problem um, so when you have a gel like this so this is like stains for various proteins but when you have a when you're doing this your gel like 
isn't stained. You take it straight from your STS Patron and then you stick it um, into, you're gonna stick it in your sandwich and do the transfer, sorry. So when you do this, your um, it's helpful to use like a pre-stained ladder. So this way, um, like the, that standard that I was talking about with the various sizes. So if you have like the various sizes um, with like a pre-stained ladder, then you don't, then you can see that it gets transferred onto the, um, the membrane. And the, um, so you sh when you take it out, you should have all of the ladder on the on the membrane and nothing on the filter paper. And the, the good thing about the ladder too is because you have the whole range of sizes, it helps you see if all the sizes got transferred. So sometimes you might have, if you have like a really big protein, it might take more um, like higher voltage or longer time to transfer and the smaller proteins on um, the opposite. So you might need to optimize for what size your protein is in order to like make sure that you don't put it, like push it through the gel and, like too far, um, but you wanna make sure it goes far enough. Um, and then it's almost time for antibodies. Um, so first you need to um, block, uh, block the membrane. So remember I told you that that membrane, it's like just basically, it binds proteins, non specifically. So it's kind of like duct tape for proteins. And, and I also told you that antibodies are proteins. So antibodies are going to stick to that membrane and they can stick non specifically. Um, so we want to make sure that can't happen. Like, so we want the antibodies to bind to the protein that's found on the, on the membrane. Like, so only that specific protein. And we don't want the antibodies to just bind everywhere because then we'll just get like this signal everywhere, which, which is really, really unuseful. So we block it. And so typically we block it with like a generic protein like BSA or even like um, milk. So you might see like powdered milk hanging out in a biochemistry lab. Um, that's probably why, like non-fat um, powdered milk. Um, well, you can also use BSA and there's different regions to use one or the other. Um, more of that in like the text version of the post. Um, but basically you're going to stick your membrane into like a little box. Um, so these boxes are typically black because our, the antibodies we use are often like the detection method is light sensitive. Um, and so we wanna keep it in the dark. Um, but we put our protein in there and then um, in like a mix of, usually it's like um, TBS, um, TBST, so tris buffered saline with tween or triton, I can't remember which one it is. But so basically it's just like a buffer, so a salt stabilized, uh, pH stabilized salt water um, with detergent, so with more so soapy stuff. Um, to prevent things from like getting all gunky and also pre to prevent non-specific binding. Um, because it's harder to, for the things to like bind and stay bind when everything's all slippery and gunky, um, basically in more biochemical terms. Um, but so you do this blocking step, um, and then, so you let it sit here, um, and swirl on like a, we have like a rotating platform that goes really slow. Like, yeah. And so you do that um, and then you pour that off and then you do the primary antibody binding. So remember the primary bind, the primary antibody is the thing that's going to bind to the protein um, that you're interested in. And specifically using that like variable region on top of that constant region. So say we have going back to that like mouse anti-GFP. So it has a mouse constant region and then the, the variable region that binds to the GFP. And then we're looking for a GFP tagged protein. So we have a protein and we express it with a GFT tag on the end so that we can like do things like this. Um, but typically to like look at it in cells or whatever. Um, so it's just an example for now. Um, but basically, so you have this mouse, you have this anti-GFP. So then you have GFP, um, something GFP tagged in the gel. Um, and then you want to see if it binds to if that if that GFP is present. So what you're going to do is you're going to add the primary antibody and then you're going to let it um, let it bind, let it bind, let it bind. And then you need to wash it. And so you need to wash off that primary antibody. So now you go back to your TBST. Um, so your buffer with the detergent um, to kind of get anything that's not specifically bound um, washed off um, because we only want the antibody to be bound where the um, protein of interest is actually there and not other places. 
Um, and so then we're going to wash it off. So now we need a way to detect it. Um, and we need a way to amplify the signal. And this is where the secondary antibody comes in. So the secondary antibody, it its variable region binds to the constant region of the first antibody. So like a goat anti um, mouse antibody. Um, and so it was like made in a goat, but it recognizes the mouse antibody that we use or any mouse antibody um, of this type. Um, and so the secondary antibody is going to have a label on it. So typically it's like either some sort of fluorescent label. So you shine light at it and it gives off light. Um, or it's like a colorimetric label, so it might have like, if you add a chemical, like a certain reaction will occur and it'll give off um, light or, or it'll turn a certain color. Um, and there's also, diff there's different types of labels. But typically the secondary antibodies are like, gonna be like a lot cheaper and they're more generic and they're also labeled. So they're really, really awesome because now you can amplify your signal because you can have multiple secondary antibodies binding to a single primary antibody. Um, and it's labeled and so then you can use some like sort of scanner or whatever to detect um, whether the protein was present um, But first you have to do more washes um, Because you want to make sure that there's not like secondary antibody non specifically bound So there's a lot of washes, which is like one of the reasons I really really hate um, doing Western blots um, And so then you might be able to see if your protein is present But that's probably not the end if you're trying to compare things because then you'll want to do like a second um use a second antibody to test for like a housekeeping gene so something that's generic like a generic thing that all cells make it like similar levels um so like tubulin or gap dh or i don't remember exactly which ones you use for protein versus like pcr or whatever but um there's different ones that you can use and this should be, allow you to like normalize between the different amounts so if you take a certain like to make sure that if you, you don't just have like a sample that has like a bunch you don't you don't take like a bunch more lysate from one cell and then not from another like in one sample and then the other one has a fewer cells so it looks like you have a lot less of the protein but you really just have a lot less of the cells even if each cell has the same amount so that's why you use this um like loading control housekeeping gene thing to normalize or i guess in this case it's like a housekeeping protein um but to normalize the various amounts so you can compare them based on the relative levels to that um, control. And um, yeah, so that's the Western blotting um, and more on the theory in um, previous video I will link to.